Hi guys, in today's video I will show you probably the easiest way to create a flared skirt using partial knitting. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you try any of the ideas you see in this video or from any other videos on my channel. I will leave a link for my Instagram in the description down below. For this demonstration I will start by knitting 4 rows only dolls, then I will put my carriage on hold. To do that all I have to do for my brother machine is to put this little knob here into H position. Starting from the opposite side where my carriage is, I will put the first two needles in holding position, then knit two rows. You can see that these two needles didn't knit. Put two more needles into holding position and knit two more rows. Continue like this, pushing two needles at a time until you pushed all the needles across. I'm knitting with a viscose and my tension is quite tight. And just by placing my finger like so at the base of the stitches, it is easier for me to push the needles out. So this is something that you can consider as well. When I finished with all the needles, I can take my carriage from holding position and knit however many rows I want, all needles again. You can see how the sample grew only on one side gradually, the right side will potentially be the bottom of a skirt. Be careful with your comb, at this point it might get caught onto the needles into your carriage, it is probably better to remove it and attach your claw weights directly onto your fabric. This is how the sample looks like. Viscose is a great choice if you want to achieve a very fluid fabric. For the next example, I will be pushing four needles at a time and again we'll be knitting two rows in between. The more needles you push out at a time, the less flare you will get for your skirt. Also, this time I'll be knitting six rows in between the partial knitting sections. You can have a play and see what you prefer for your skirt and how much flare you want to achieve. So this is a sample I have just demonstrated. Here you can compare the two samples. At the bottom of the screen is the sample where I pushed two needles at a time and knitted four rows in between every partial knitting section. And at the top of the screen you can see the sample where I pushed four needles at a time and knitted six rows in between. If you do not wish to get these tiny holes when knitting a sample, one option for you is to wrap your yarn like so. So just knit one row, then grab the yarn and place it under the last needle you pushed out. This will create a float and will stop the little hole from forming. To do this even quicker, you can push one more needle after knitting the first row. It is up to you how you want to do this. Here you can see the difference. I personally don't mind the little holes, I think they are a nice detail, but if you do not like them, you can do that for your samples. So if you wish to actually create a skirt using this technique, this is how I approached it. It would be very difficult to use the row counter to help us know how many rows we need to knit, because we are knitting so many rows for each partially knitted sections. But we actually only need to keep account of the rows we knit in between, because that would actually only be the edge of our skirt. So I knitted a swatch and then I counted the rows in between the sections where I did partially knitting. So just the rows I knitted on all needles. I calculated how many of these sections I have per 10 centimeters. Then I calculated how many repeats I will have to do in order to have the right size. For example, let's say that I would need 80 repeats of 6 rows to make the skirt. I can just write down from 1 to 8 
and every time I complete the part where I knit all needles I will write one and two and three and doing this in 10 repeat sections it's even easier to keep track of. So this is what I did for my skirt and it worked pretty great. Also to calculate how long your skirt will be you have to calculate the number of stitches. You will be limited by your 200 needles on your bed when it comes to the length of the skirt but I'm sure you can get a pretty decent length just by doing all needles if you have to. So this is the skirt that I made. For this skirt I pushed out 6 needles at the time and I knitted 6 rows in between every holding section. I wanted to create a ballerina type skirt that I would just wrap around myself because I'm using a very fine viscose, I would have to wrap it twice around me to get two layers. So in order to save some time, I knitted half of the skirt using partial knitting and the other half just normal, plain rows. It came out a little bit too short. I could have continued it if I wanted to, but I didn't mind it because the part where it's a bit see-through can go over my leg and that's completely fine for me. I tried to think of a few ways to create a waistband. Initially I just attached this part onto my machine and built the strap, but I wasn't happy on how it looked and the part where I needed plain rows was curling a lot as well, so that didn't work. I thought of reattaching the whole piece onto the machine and knitting a rib, but I don't have enough needles to do that, to do the whole skirt in one go, so I knew that it had to be knitted in the same direction as the skirt is knitted. I wanted to knit a long rib, but this yarn is so fine and it didn't look like it was going to work, so I decided to knit a separate piece using circular knitting, so it was a really long tube basically. So in order to do that for my brother machine, I have to press the left or right partial cam onto my main carriage and then the opposite cam into riverbed. I have to put that into PR position. So I press my left one on my main bed and the right one on my riverbed. And now I will be knitting main bed only when knitting from left to right and a riverbed when knitting from right to left. This is how we create a tube. So here's my waistband. So I just placed the edge of my skirt onto my linker and you can see here I'm struggling to find a way to place the waistband on and to link it. It was quite difficult to catch only the first stitch of the waistband so I had to do the third or fourth stitch, something like that. It didn't come out perfectly. If I come up with any other ideas I'll probably make a video about it in the future but we'll see how it goes. And this is my skirt. I just hope for summer days so I can be able to wear it. Here in the UK we don't have many of those. So this is how the skirt goes around me twice. You can see here the see-through part but with the right color underwear. I think I can get away with it and with a nice knitted crop top I think it will look really really cool. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you got inspired by this video and you've learned a couple of things and if you make a skirt please don't forget to tag me on Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye bye!